Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Shovel Knight. So, last time we successfully cleared the Lich Yard, the Lair of Spectre Knight, and in so doing, we got access to a new area of the map, where more members of the Knights of the Order of the No Quarter are awaiting us. But, before we do that, we have these two jewels on the map. One of them works in a similar way from before, the other one, not so much. So let's take on this moving gem first here in Primor Keep. So it's basically the Primor Keep again, but this time we have auto scrolling to deal with. And we have to be fast in order to get as much treasure as possible. And if you move, miss just a little bit, don't worry all that much. Just do your best to get as much as you can. Yeah, the, you remember the books from when we actually did the King Knight stage? Um, they have basically do the opening of the runes like they were before. Now that... Yeah, I think I want this side. Yeah, because it looks like the treasure here is much more valuable. Can I get that little one? Yes. Ooh, nice catch. Well, looks like the stage is over, but not before we get ourselves quite a bit of more treasure. Alright. So, with that stage taken care of, before I go any further, we're going to go back to the village because there's one thing I wanted to do. Um, something I did not do at the end of the last episode, just because I wanted to try and keep it as close to 20 minutes as possible, but I wanted to speak with the Magicist in order to increase our magic, because that's something we could not do um, last in the first episode because we didn't have any relics yet. That's changed now. So now that we're taking care of that, let's get on out of here, because we're going to go ahead and take the item that we obtained in the Lich Yard and use it here, Forest of Phasing. And let's talk to this guy. Yikes, spikes! If I could only phase away to safety, I could cross and get so much treasure! Yeah, and he's referring to the phase locket here. So, if we use it, we can actually not take damage from the spikes. But as I mentioned before, the phase locket, its, its, usage, its usage is very short. You get only like 3 seconds of invincibility. So you have to be fast in order to get any treasure that may lurk beyond. But we're not done with this place yet. As you can see, they have more challenges like this. So let's make a quick transition to get there. We're not going to... And I've jumped short. Yeah, I would do that, wouldn't I? Because that's who I am. <laughs> yeah, let's try this again. Of course I'm going to fall short on the jump. And this time it works. Ah. Now we have to deal with these guys. Yeah, there's no way you can get past them, so just use the phase locket to get yourself out of danger. Now here's a new twist. Get that. Then, then we gotta do this again. Yeah, you do have just enough time to make that jump. And thankfully, these blue jars we help fill your magic. Let me get what's necessary. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Horsey, the jousting horse, ran right into me. I was hoping to get over him, but unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. All right, now we got. The burning blue birds that we saw at the end of the previous stage after we in the low bonus round there with Shield Knight. So yeah, yeah, we gotta do this again. Clear ourselves a path. And then that's actually the, that's how it ends here at Force of Facing. And for the last reward, we get another sheet of music. That's pretty cool. So Force the Facing clear. So, you know what we do with music. Bard time! So let's give it to him. What do we get this time? You found the adventure awaits! Alright. 
Yeah, we're just collecting quite a bit of special maps for our good friend the Bard. But now, I think it's time we get back to fighting members of the Order of No Quarter. So, now that the second area has opened up, we have three options. We have the Explodatorium, the Lair of Plague Knight. Then over here, we have the Lost City, Lair of Mole Knight. Now you're probably wondering why I couldn't move directly to the left. It's because the board prevents me from doing so until I successfully defeat an Order of the No Quarter in order to allow myself to be able to do the proper circle around the map. And then, there it finally, we have the Iron Whale, Lair of Treasure Knights. And over here, we also have the Knuckler's Quarry. This is something we're going to leave for later, because we don't have the right item to use there. For now, we'll get started on taking our third member of the Order of No Quarter out. We're going to go clockwise order by starting with the Explodatorium, the Lair of Plague Knights. Sharpen thy shovel yet again. Now, little information on this yellow floor here? Yeah, you step on it, it lights on fire. So, RUN! <laughs> yeah, just run, damn it! And back the way we came. Jump and jump. And then, these blocks work differently. Other blocks you see me when I do the pogo to try and dig them up, they take two hits. These take only one. So now we have another situation where the floor is on fire. Couldn't quite clear the bug though. And these green rats, you want to be careful about these because the moment you kill them, they explode, and anything that's any blocks that are near them, they also are destroyed. I'll try and demonstrate with this rat right, right there. There we go. Yeah, and that's not all we're worrying about. Yeah, overhead fear. We got death from above. 1979. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard of Death from Above 1979. Their music's pretty good. Ugh. Yeah, well, that almost that almost spoke that almost rang true there. Death from Above. Yeah, yeah, pretty much forced to take it there. Thankfully, this carrot gives me a little bit of extra health. Plus, we have a little fishing area. So let's go ahead and use it. And we got another goldfish. Oh, look out! Oh, wait! Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a bit tricky to sidestep it. At least we've now caught them caught in a loop. Thank you. Alright, there's our first checkpoint. Then we'll dispatch of you. Then we'll dispatch of you. And then I want to wait until you're right underneath that. Yeah, you cannot get up there unless you do that on that particular rat. So, we get another chance of the treasure chests. Here we go. Now, this one's going to be a bit tricky. But we got it. Yeah, because you have to work fast there. And we get another music sheet. Onward we go. So now all we have to worry about is clearing out this area. <laughs> and making sure that the rats don't land on my head. Thankfully, we get a chicken in this compensation. <laughs> don't you just love that when the enemies do that for you? Alright, now we got this guy. Eat those loud little pellets that will destroy the blocks we're standing on. So, dispatch of them as quickly as you can. Alright, so let's see what all we can get, if anything. We'll go ahead and pull it through. Can I split them? Yep. Of course I can. So, with all those blocks taken care of, on would we go. So now we're really getting into the chemical romance, as it will, as you will, for this place. Because you can see the glowing beakers, all neon and stuff. Yeah, neon in a medieval? In a medieval game? Doesn't sound right. Well, this is Shovel Knight after all. And away we go. Yeah, careful about the spikes. These spikes will not kill you. They are not instant death if you touch them. However, of course, it is in your best interest to avoid touching them, period. 
as you can see, some of them will even launch you into the spikes. Into those spikes that will actually kill you. So be fast on your feet. Alright. I want to deal with you guys again. Oh, ah, crap. Yeah, the, they would have actually gotten me up there, but I, I beat myself, essentially. Alright. On to our next area. Trying to avoid, yeah, that creepy spider that's shooting out plasma all over the place, or whatever the heck that's supposed to be. Alright, next checkpoint. Let's back to the rats. If they don't land on my head, of course. Give ourselves a path. And Death from Above, 1979. <laughs> now, all the blocks here now you're gonna see are going to be um, and be destroyed, so you gotta be quick because you don't want to get caught in a situation where the bird will take away your ability to get there. Now, I think the platform that we saw um, me miss on before, that's how you get access to that music sheet. I'm pretty sure that is how you accomplish that. Let's see if there's anything down here. Yes, there is. More chicken. Next. Mini boss time! Got this wizard throwing out all sorts of beakers, and he do hurt you. And then he'll even use them on himself and turn into this scary yeti. Thankfully, if you can pogo it right, you can get a whole bunch of hits in on him. But he's gonna run out of gas eventually and turn back to normal, and then he's just gonna do what he did before throw a whole bunch of beakers up into the air hopes that it'll hit you, and then he'll use some stuff on himself, but he doesn't get another chance to become a Yeti. <laughs> so, with that taken care of, onward to the next area. And now we got more fire to deal with. We have an apple, Streets of Rage 2, I love it. Okay, and go. One drop of fire, don't get burned. Ooh, now an another knight is in play. Now we've seen these guys before, already in King Knight stage. But in this one, they're a bit... Yeah, they're, they're basically the same style. They fight the same way. Let's try and do what the best we can to get them. And I did. And now timing. We gotta do perfect transitioning. And having done that, we can now move on. Yeah, you're not getting me, little ghosty. Yeah, I'd... Oh, wait a minute. Aha! Not so easy to pull, whoa. Run, run. And treasure chest. And big pink jewel. I love it. Uh, didn't like that, though. Didn't love that. Ooh, soy, can't play. Now we have another transition. Thankfully, I was able to save myself. Can't quite get it. Oh! Man, what, what am I doing? Thank goodness for invincibility frames. Launch? <laughs> Thanks for the help. <laughs> It'll be worth it if I reach the checkpoint, which I do. Yeah, and now for the demonstration of Plague Knight being the scientist that he is, we now have Shovel Knight Cones to contend with. Yeah, it just keeps getting more and more fun, doesn't it? Well, they can't do any real harm to us yet. But thankfully, they die in one hit. Okay, now... Oh, he jumped over me. Yeah, th unfortunately for you, I got you anyway. And guess what's left? And away we go again. Alright, now we got more Shovel Knight clones. Make sure we get this. And, like Shovel Knight, they can go through the floor. <laughs> this one, however, I'm gonna want to make sure... Well, how did I not get hit by the plasma there from that guy? This to take care of you. Awesome. I want your jewel that you left behind. Thanks. And pop up. Perfect. 
now let's pull out the fishing rod again. Let's see what else we can score. Another gold fish. Another 350. And we've reached the end of the stage. So to counter playing night, we have to dive. Dive, dive! <laughs> Leave me alone! Show yourself, Plague Knight. Your trickery will not stop me. Trickery? The fruits of my research are no mere trick. <laughs> As we see. Now let's have a lesson, shall we? I promise it will be enlightening. And so, let's see if we can cure Plague Knight. Much like the other scientists we saw before, this guy can actually throw stuff at us in order to inflict damage. And he does a good job of it. He also introduces these, these beakers that you can pogo off of. Them. So, make sure you can take advantage of them as best as you can. Uh, yeah, Plague Knight's doubling, Plague Knight doubling back, but yeah. He's not only a scientist, he's a magician too. He's, take, he's taking a page from the Spectre Knight playbook. Oh! Oh, I better, um, use one of my i to get a full heal. <laughs> Good thing I have them, because I definitely needed them here. And yeah, now he's going to start introducing more beakers. Yeah, as you notice, the beakers, they actually get destroyed if uh, one of his shots lands on them. So be careful about that. Well, we've almost got them. And, oh, really? And I can't even reach him. Now I have to wait for him to clear me a path. I've almost got you, though, Plague Knight. Ow. Oh, wow, he's getting really hard at the end, but... Nonetheless, Plague Knight is cured. Yes. <laughs> I believe we've seen the last of Plague Knight. Well, actually... Yeah, you'd like to think that, wouldn't you? But we'll actually see him again. In fact, spoiler alert, we'll be seeing all the Knights of the Order of Nono Quarter again after we beat them. But that doesn't happen until later on. So, with the Explodatorium now safely out of our way, let's go ahead and take our treasure and move on. And we have a new threat on the field. But before we go say hello to him, let's find go into our new location, the Armor Outpost. The reason why we want to come in here is for a few reasons. Now, first of all, this sheet of music we cannot yet get because we don't have the item that we require. But, there's something I want to do here because there's something that can be done that can actually get you a little bit more money. What you want to do is speak with these three people, starting with this peacock gent. With my vast riches, I could buy this whole store, but I forgot my wallet. Oh, upstanding knight, you could part with a paltry thousand gold, no. So, yeah, you actually are expected to do this in order to get the accomplishment that you're looking for. Wow, thanks, I can't believe that worked! Yeah, you got scammed. This guy won't do that to you, though. Leo, I buy only the best, and on to my latest purchase, unfortunately. I'm only a thousand gold short. Yeah, this is a high-end boutique. Excelsior, now that I have my purchase, I shall take my leave. And away he goes. And finally this lady. Dolly. Oh, such a charming brooch. If only I had the means to afford it. All I need is a mere thousand gold. Hooray, this is just what I needed. Thank you, hero. So yeah, you're supposed to do that to speak, get Mr. Hat to speak to you. Ah, oh, my precious heart. That's a lovely helmet. So lovely, so lovely. I must inquire, sir, about your curious collection. Travel a land far and wide I do, searching, learning, teaching, collecting, all shapes, all sizes, hats. Each one I wear grants me a new power, and your hat looks powerful indeed. Intriguing, but I am rather attached to my helmet. Yes, yes, about that. Yeah. Suddenly, all of a sudden, we're breaking out into a fight! Impromptu boss duel! Against Mr. Hat! Oh, yeah, you're gonna try and... 
do stuff like this, like throw swords under the air. Wait, 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 I was about to say, where did I go? But yeah, you can get a lot of hits on Mr. Hat very fast. And heck, you can even show up little aerialistic spells. Oh, I almost got him though. And there it is. Yeah, he's tough, but not that tough. And we get the 3,000 gold we lost, plus 2,000 more. Enough! I know not what came over me. My hunger for hearts took control. Your beautiful heart. It's a helmet. Right, oh, I knew that. Well, it's in good health. For now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Right, well, off I go then. And so away he goes. Yeah, so he just hangs out up there for a while. In the meantime, though, we can jump up here and climb up this ladder to actually access the armor outpost outright. So, this guy, the shovel smith, can help us out. That's a nice shovel blade you have there, lad, but I can unlock it. And, uh, but I can improve it, unlock its true abilities. And he can do so by giving us three special abilities, all which total 13,000 gold, which we don't quite have. But I'll take the two that are going to be the most effective to me for right now. Which is the Trench Blade to dig up a pile of treasure in one move, rather than having to mash the X button repeatedly. So he'll add that to my shovel. And then, we'll also add the Drop Spark. Slash the spark to the ground when you're at full health. So yeah, it's a little special ability that you get added there. And so as far as this guy's concerned, the armor, This be the aerial anvil, need an armor upgrade, if you need something forged, I'm your fella. So yeah, this guy gives us five different versions of the armor that we currently have. We can drop as half as much gold when you fall in battle with the red. The purple gives you more magic. The silver allows you to perform the charge slash without actually having to get it enhanced into your own shovel. There's the ornate plate, which unfortunately doesn't do anything. But I, I don't think, maybe it's just a ploy. I don't know if that's actually true or not. And finally, the black stuff, the black armor, will make you more stable. You don't um, get knocked back by enemies if you take damage. But we're gonna save um, this stuff now because the what I need, um, I currently cannot afford it. So for now, we'll leave this alone. So yeah, we have two threats out on the field now. And it looks like that the only way we can continue on is if we fight at least one of them. Actually, that's not quite true. But I'm gonna make it a point to take on these two new challengers when I join you again next time. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Shovel Knight. And when I join you again, we will see just what these two guys all are all about, and then we'll move on to take on the next member of the Order of No Quarter. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novoral Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.